What's going on, people? Before I get into my final build for my Berserker, yes, Two-Handed Warrior Berserker, I wanted to talk about advanced crafting and specifically best gear, quote unquote. And I put huge air quotes on that because a lot of what people have been looking at from what I've seen is the base stats, the base DPS. And as far as that goes, this would be the best schematic I have for this axe right here. It's what I'm using right now. But um, honestly, with the utility slots available and the materials um, that you can put into it, which call for metal, for example, um, what I'm getting is basic things like stagger on hit, armor, penetration, stuff like that. I, and really, I've built my warriors more of a rogue type. I want criticals and critical chance. Now look at this. This is a tier 2 item with much lower DPS, but this can honestly actually be a better weapon. If I wanted to spend uh, top tier materials on it, which I'm not going to. I'm going to wait for a tier 3 schematic similar to this. But the offense slots call for cloth and fabric instead of metal, and look what I get. I get critical chance and critical damage, depending on how I want to uh, mix and match that, okay? Now, if I had a tier 3 item calling for, say, one fabric and two leather, I could put 30 plus critical damage buff on just my weapon, not counting upgrades, and then possibly get an extra 10% 10, 10 uh, critical chance or so. And with all my other critical chance buffs um, thrown in there, I could be pulling off criticals most of the time and be getting a huge damage buff with stacks with all my other critical damage buffs and, you know, really plays well into my Reaver tree and stuff like that. Also, if you notice armor, especially in the Warrior class, if you look to the bottom right, um, it's almost all defense stats, okay? But if you can uh, find some gear with utility slots, then look what you get, right? And even putting metal in this, this plays into a Warrior well. Um, look at the utility slot, and I get the option to upgrade my Strength and Constitution. Now, if you think when you level and you put a point into a passive, you get plus three. And you have the possibility to get, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine points into uh, strength and or constitution, right? By just one simple upgrade. And you get a tier three item, and if you can get maybe two of those upgrades, you can buff your character quite a bit. That's huge. That's huge. All right? And uh, also your, uh, like your arms here, you can do the same thing with upgrades if you can find a utility slot, right? And if you can find a utility slot that calls for leather, you could also do things like... Uh, upgrade your dexterity and cunning, but I think that only comes with rogue gear, which isn't a complete um, failure for the warrior because you can make rogue gear for your warrior to simply use snow floor skin as the main crafting ingredient, all right? And uh, then you can, you know, of course, upgrade that rogue gear and uh, add, you know, cunning and dexterity to your warrior instead of uh, like strength and constitution. But the strength and constitution is cool because the strength, if you really just want to concentrate on that, really raises your attack. All right, especially for a warrior, right? And then, uh, of course, Constitution raises your health, which is also good for a Reaver, and uh, also raises your uh, melee defense, which is also good for a Reaver, because if you're going to be in there in the middle of the mobs, it's nice to manage the damage you're taking a little bit. But uh, just something to consider. So when it comes to the best gear, craft gear that fits your character, all right? It's a little counterintuitive. It's kind of thinking outside the box, but don't just look at the base DPS. A lower DPS weapon with the right materials used and the right kind of schematic that fits your character could actually do more damage, right? Or be more effective as far as your character is concerned. Something to think about. Okay? Now, this kind of speaks for itself. Um, at the end, I'll throw in a, a dragon fight from one of the uh, Impre dragons and uh, show you, you know, the... The team at work, um, I actually go in there with Iron Bull instead of a true tank and a couple mages, and everybody's just kind of doing their thing. We'll see that. But uh, essentially, the last five levels have really just been putting the icing on the cake. Um, lots of passives, filling out everything. My Reaver Tree is really playing into, uh, into the whole Berserker thing. You know, get in there in the mobs, take a little damage, do a little more damage, uh, hit Rampage as often as possible. I do have, uh, also even have this, um, Bonus Focus for the whole group based on combos. Just about everything my, my team does is a combo. Essentially, one person knocking someone off balance and the other person hitting them for it, making them pay for it. Um, that's essentially uh, the whole uh, theme, the whole uh, MO behind my, my, my team tactics. And um, like my tanks and my mages and everybody else, it's, it's really just the same thing. It's, it's been adding passives and upgrading things that they were already doing. The build was almost set at level 5, all right? Then we dressed it up to level 10, threw in some specs, so by level 15, we could have our spec tree opened, you know, specialization tree. And then um, after that, it was adding more passives to really buff that. And as I ask my teammates to do a little bit more, I find um, any kind of passives that will strengthen their mana or stamina regen, 
uh, or something like that. Okay, so if I want them to, to perform an extra ability, I need to give them the reserves to be able to do that and not hinder their, their basic job, what they're supposed to be doing all along, right? My tank should draw hate, my mages should cast barrier, and my uh, warriors, um, DPS, my, my main character, DPS warrior, and my rogues should be um, dealing damage. And uh, as they're doing all those things, they should be setting up the next guy to do his job better. Like, you know, one should be stunning, the other one should take advantage of that. One should knock an enemy off balance, the other one should capitalize on that, and so on and so forth, right? Um, anytime you can, um, my rogues can tear an enemy's armor, okay? If if all my team is, uh, we'll get into uh, behaviors here in a second, but if all my team is concentrating on the same target, right? And my rogue um, tears their armor with a critical hit, which my rogue should be pulling off criticals pretty often, right? Um, then that makes them even weaker and even taking more damage. Stacked on top of the extra damage they're already taking from everything else. So it's really synergy. Everything should play into everything and keeping that in mind. Now, um, I'm starting to look at this fire tree. I'm probably not even going to use any fire spells, honestly, but there are two passives here which are just huge. Notice cooldown reduction, okay? And, um, you know, if you can cast uh, what you need to do, barrier and things like that more often, and everything else, if you're mana regen is faster, then your cooldown should be faster also, okay? And uh, this also shortens cooldown time, this uh, what winter stillness in the middle of that tree, and so all those things kind of playing together. Anyway, any any passive or any skill you pick, how does it affect something else? Don't think of it in and of itself like, oh, this does a lot of damage. Well, what else does it do? If it doesn't do anything else, pass on it, you know? Especially if the mana or stamina cost is really high, screw that. You know, find something that can stun somebody for the whole party. It may do a little damage, even if not, the tactical advantage of everyone else laying more damage might, in the long run, do more damage to that target than your one bit of spike damage from your fancy lightning bolt or your, uh, you know, whatever whatever a, a attack that you're using, or if it's one of your warriors, maybe your, your lunge and slash or something like that. Well, does it stun them? Does it knock them off balance? Does it freeze them? Does it paralyze them? Well, if no, then, you know, honestly, I'd pass on that and find something else that costs the same amount of, of mana that can benefit the entire party. And you can control the battlefield that way. It's just something to keep in mind. And now this is uh, also keeping in mind these builds right here with friendly fire active. So there are skills that you're saying, well, why don't you use that? Well, because it'll probably wipe my whole party. If I do use that, things like Whirlwind for my warrior or Immolate for my mages, you know, Immolate, that splash damage can uh, can fry everybody uh, around that enemy. And since my tanks are in there already, you know, soaking up the hate, right, and taking the damage as it is, I don't need any help from my own team members to help knock us out. All right, now here's my behaviors. I have, uh, you know, we've said this in the, in the last three guides, right? Same here. Targeting behaviors, everyone follows. Um, my my main character by name except for Cole. Now I haven't really used Cole, but uh, this is something I'll, I'll be going along with when I do play a rogue as my main character. Is I want Cole to be backstabbing the person that Cassandra is worried about. So that would be the only. And then Cassandra is essentially going to follow my lead, but I want Cole to follow Cassandra's lead and attack the person that Cassandra is attacking. Because if it's Cassandra's attacking somebody, odds are that person's attention is on Cassandra. And that means Cole can get in there and do his thing, all right? You see the logic there? All right, I, I don't want attention ever on Cole. I don't want him off attacking random targets off in the distance, getting getting murdered and molested by mobs. I need him in there where Cassandra's at um, doing his thing. And also Cassandra cast that Blessed Blades a lot, and Cole would just be stacking, you know, extra, what, 10, 15% damage to all his attacks, all right? But um, here's teamwork. Um, we're, this is a level dragon. I think this is, I believe... Uh, He's a level 20. Havernal, he might be a 19. And my party here at the time is 19. I think my character's 20. But anyway, close enough. Um, leveled enough, just to show. But um, we'll try not to pause, except maybe to drink a potion here or there. I've upgraded a few things, which are really playing in well. Got the Mighty Offense Tonic up, where criticals are doing extra. Although, um, I don't think the criticals buff the final number. Like, say, if my critical on top of everything is, um, you know, 2,000. And then, you know, the Mighty Offense Tonic, it says it adds 100% to that. Well, it doesn't make it 4,000, all right? I think it's buffing it some, but I think it's starting with one of the base numbers and then adding 100% to that before before it factors in a bunch of other things. Because I, I don't see myself pulling off double criticals. There was a time where, oh, all you know, all the stars were aligned just right, and I pulled off, I don't know, it was like a 7,000-something critical, okay? 
and uh, I think it was with Mighty Blow. So you know, there's a lot of lot of bonus damage uh, buffed in there. But um, if if the Mighty Offense Tonic, you know, being true to its 100% extra critical damage was true, I, it might have been anywhere from you know 10 to 14,000, 15,000 critical. And, and I don't think that would be the case. What I think it does is it is it uh, buffs one of the uh, initial numbers that it's calculating in before it comes up with its final number. But that's fine. Any extra damage is cool with me. And you'll notice um, I am pulling off the criticals that I was looking forward to. And keep in mind, this is not um, a weapon geared towards um, what I want my character to be, nor do I have my armor um, finalized either. I'm, I'm pretty much rolling with whatever armor um, I find for the most part. I, I might throw an upgrade on it. Um, when it applies, you know, for a little extra strength or constitution here or there, but I uh, haven't um, just finalized on a on a on a, on an end game set of armor yet. Okay, and uh, I will eventually get to that. Um, and I will also, like I say, I'm looking for something like that jagged battle axe, but I'm looking for a tier three version before I spend my dragon bones. Um, you know, there's only a certain number of dragons. That's not like that's not an endless material, uh, and I'm not even going to consider you know exploits or things like that. So what I'm doing is. Uh, waiting for the schematic that fits my character best and then I'll use my tier 3 stuff or tier 4 stuff or whatever my my ultra rare materials and come up with you know the best gear that I can and settle on that also you know it's my mages when I settle down to do that the only reason I haven't done it for my mages already is I'm pretty much going to do everything all at once and I'm going to say okay this is what I'm going to finish the game with and then I'll probably not really think about equipment anymore except for maybe changing out a ring here or there or something like that or if I find some really cool amulet or whatever but, uh, yeah, all right, so I, I really, really want to emphasize, okay? And, and I like finding something that's a little counterintuitive in a game because it usually really uh, really can, like, put you over the top as far as, you know, character builds and stuff go, is thinking, uh, like, a little outside the box. And, uh, and you know, I was thinking the, the one thing that Dragon Age offers is they, is they give you these glittery numbers on a base schematic, like a dagger that does 300 damage or, you know, an axe that does 300 damage or whatever. But then you look at the um, slots available to you, and it may or may not actually fit into the way you built your character and built your party and built your team. And if you put that kind of thought into it, then I would put that much thought into your gear also. And so, like I say, find a schematic where um, the slots, like if you have a weapon um, and you, if you're being really, really tanky, maybe there's weapons with defense slots, for example, or just straight um, utility slots I, I don't know that those exist, but let's say they did, where you could, uh, you know, buff your stats, buff your, say, your constitution and, and things like that. Buff defensive stats instead of offense, where you're just going, you know, um, put a special uh, masterwork thing on there where you, you gain guard, you know, or, or you heal with each hit, you know, things like that, if you're just going to be super tanky. But if you're going, you know, DPS in mind, um, extra damage for a certain number of enemies around you, or perhaps uh, if you want to use your specialist ability, which I'm really considering strongly, is putting this on my armor and or my weapon is like the 30% extra focus gain for a certain material you put in the masterwork slot, right? And so I can just be gaining focus like a madman with enhanced focus belts on everybody. It's built in my gear, you know, with everybody and things like that. And, uh, and be able to do my Berserk thing um, more often than not, which is really, really kind of what I have in mind, because it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to just go, you know, just yell really loud and puff your chest out and just go to swinging like a madman. Close your eyes and swing your weapon as fast as you can and hope you hit something. I mean, I think that's, uh, I think that's a lot of fun. All right, so that's how I built this. That's why I call it a Berserker build. It's more true to the, uh, say, Origins and Dragon Age 2 Berserker than uh, the Reaver build as it is, the vanilla Reaver build, which is... Uh, what, I, what I've seen a lot, and I, I think uh, this is a, a cool play on that. It's a lot of fun, puts up good numbers. Um, we'll see if you follow my Let's Play in, uh, you know, videos after this point, you know, in the level 22, 23 range, you know, we'll see really good numbers because I'll have weapons that do critical damage and uh, and armor that, that factors into my strength and constitution so I have survivability and have an extra attack and stuff, all right? Anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you want to subscribe, click that button over my head. For all my videos, click the box on the left. And uh, I'll catch y'all later. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.